Welcome everyone. I'm gonna give everybody a quick second here to join us. As people slowly join us, my name is Kate Deering. I am an assistant director within GEESE graduate programs. I'm very excited to be here. We have um, a fabulous panelist with us today and excited to share some information about the IMBA program here at um, the GEESE College of Business. As we're waiting, go ahead and throw in the chat. Tell us where you're from. We always get so excited to see where everybody is joining us from all over the world. Um, so throw in the chat, let us know where you're from in the world. And um, myself, I'm here in Champaign. Um, Professor Delgampolov, where are you from? Where are you from uh, I'm actually in Naperville right now. Naperville, Illinois, that's where I live, a couple of hours Excellent. away from campus. Awesome. And then Lori, our, um, one of my colleagues, she's out in Bend, Oregon. So um, we've got the United States here kind of covered. Um, I also wanted to point out here on the screen, we have a QR code. So at any point during this presentation, um, you can go ahead and scan this QR code. We'll, we'll throw it up at the end as well. But if you'd like to talk with somebody from our admissions team or the recruitment team, we're happy to reach out to you sooner than later. You just fill out a short form and we will get in contact with you. Um, through the presentation today. So we're gonna, we're gonna learn a lot about the program. If you have questions, go ahead and throw those in the Q&A. Uh, feature. That's just a much easier place for us to keep track of the questions. Everybody can see the answers. Um, we like to save the chat for um, just kind of comments, you know, here and there. But if you have serious program questions or questions for the professor, we will um, go ahead and take those in the Q&A. So our agenda, agenda today, um, we are gonna meet Professor Dolga Pola. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about Geese Online as a whole and um, touch on curriculum and content in the IMBA program, as well as the application process. And then we'll have plenty of time at the end for a Q&A. But most importantly, um, I want to in introduce Professor Vlad. He obviously has an extensive educational background, as you can see on the screen. I'm not even gonna be able to get into all of those, um, but you know, I think we're gonna have you introduce yourself, if that's okay, talk a little bit about what your path has been to, to arrive at GEESE, um, what your teaching style looks like, any research you've done, and um, just a little bit about the current course or which course you're currently teaching. Sure. Um, sure. I'm, I'm happy to be here at GIS. I, um, I, love, uh, I love the college. I really love the program that I teach in. Prior to joining, um, joining the MBA program back in 2018, about five years ago, before that, for a good 15, almost 20 years, I was an academic administrator. I served as a dean. I served as, um, um, as the VP for academic affairs at, at a couple of colleges and universities. And I was really getting, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, burned out from the administrative work a little bit and really wanted to get back into teaching. And so that's how I made that jump to the IMBA program. Um, and that's been quite a bit of a joy. Uh, what were the other questions, uh, Kate? Sorry, you took away the little guide in there and uh, I'm looking. Um, Okay. So, oh, sorry. Uh, there we go. No um, worries. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Good questions. Um, I probably should be taking notes, right? So, teaching style. Um, you know, sort of. Uh, you know, our. You know, our live lectures and our office hours are very lively. Um, we have a relatively high enrollment program, and I really do enjoy kind of the opportunities to make personal connections of students. So, a lot of my teaching is really in the office hours. Um, also in the discussion forum, the Q&As are typically very, very active. Uh, my prior research was in health economics and economics of the public sector. I'm an economist by education, right? Sort of my PhD is in economics from Clark University in the economics of the public sector and econometrics. And so lately my research had been focused, you know, kind of on an applied research that relates teaching of economics to instructional design. And in terms of current courses that I teach, um, so I serve as an associate instructor for three out of the four courses in the core two concentrations. So basically uh, microeconomics for business, money and banking, and statistics for managerial decision-making. And I also teach the capstone for that concentration. And these are all required courses. So if you do enroll in the program, you're probably gonna see me a lot in there. 
Yes, you are very well known from the students, probably for that fact, teaching a whole entire specialization. Um, uh, it, it, it also helps us keep the courses in the specialization thoroughly consistent of each other, right? Sort of that's kind of like the beauty of it. And we do use the team teaching method, by the way. So we typically have, um, you know, sort of two, a, a team of two or maybe even three faculty members teaching any given course. And that had worked really, really well for us and for the students. Excellent. And we're going to dive deeper into like what a live session is really like here in a moment. Um, but I did want to just give all of our guests who are here today um, just a brief overview of Geese Online programs and, and what that looks like. Um, we really like to share just the qualities or the pillars that we've built um, within Geese Business Online. The first one is flexibility, then we have stackability, and then we have online by design. The first pillar just in, in being flexible, this online environment where um, our mission is really providing accessible education to working professionals, we take this pretty seriously. And so our programs are 100% uh, online. There's no travel requirements, um, unless you want to visit us. We love, we love meeting with our students. Um, but that includes all your course and group work. It's also paced to fit your needs. You can take one course or two. We're really flexible there. You can even take a term off if you needed to. And then lastly, as far as flexibility, um, our tuition structure is pretty nice in that we have a pay-as-you-go tuition model. So you're really only paying for each course that you're registered for um, throughout your time in, in the program. So there's not a lump sum payment, um, you just pay as you go. Um, and then the second pillar is stackability. So this is a, a little bit of a newer thing for us, but our credentials in all of our, um, our online programs, they stack and they work together depending on where you're at in your learner journey. So we have some single course upskilling. Um, you could stack that course into a graduate certificate and then you could stack that graduate certificate into a degree. So um, this unique stack stackability really allows you the option to test drive a course um, and, and be able to, to have something that's available or an option for you that fits where you're at in your, in your educational journey. And then lastly, online by design it means that we designed this program to be delivered to thousands of learners worldwide, all the way back in 2016. So we created very highly engaging content that you can access anywhere, anytime without giving up, you know, running your, your child to school, your job, um, vacations, all of those things. So it was really intentionally designed um, to also have a lot of interactions with your fellow students and your faculty members. So that's just to give you a, a kind of an overview. Um, Professor Vlad, can you talk a little bit about the, the quality of an online MBA compared to an in-person program? I, I know that a lot of questions that we get is like, oh my gosh, like I'm gonna earn my, my MBA in a virtual environment. Um, how can that be and how can it be you know, high quality. Can you talk a little bit about um, about that? Uh, sure, sure. Great question. And I, I can imagine that there is a lot of students who have concerns about something like this. Um, you know, when you earn um, the IMBA degree, that's a degree that, you know, has content that is identical to the programs that we would offer on campus. And the rigor is absolutely compatible, right? You know, sort of we absolutely know that, you know, obviously the reputation of the institution matters to you very much. Our courses are high quality courses. Our IMBA program is the full length IMBA program, right? It's, um, you know, sort of about 60 semester credits. Um, if I recall correctly, maybe a little bit more than that. So you're getting, you know, a fantastic, both a fantastic introduction to a variety of area in business, but also a lot of opportunities to go deeper. Um, into subjects that really interest you by, by selecting your concentration. And so from that perspective, I can tell you we stand behind the quality of our program and the experience that you will have is very comparable to an on-campus experience. You're going to see us live, right? There is some recorded content that you'll be using in Coursera, but the live lectures that we offer to you typically two or three times a week for every course, the office hours that we offer and normally we will have in the courses I'm associated with, maybe four to five office hour sessions that my, my co-instructors and I split amongst each other. 
you will have plenty of interactions, meaningful interactions of the faculty members and plenty of interactions of your fellow students. That's really great to, to hear. Um, I think we're gonna touch on those faculty office hours um, a little bit more too, but um, four to five times per week, that that's amazing. So um, I think a lot of times our students or our learners, you know, potential learners come to us and they're like, are we gonna be able to interact with them? And yes, you will for sure. So, um, okay, let's just give, I just wanna give you a little bit of an overview for, for some new people that are joining us here today on the MBA or the Master of Business Administration. This, here's some quick facts as far as the cost. It's going to come in right at um, 24K. Um, that's going to include all of your tuition and fees. It is going to take right around two to three years on average, about 2.4 years to complete the whole program. So you can take one course or two each eight week term. And we have five of those eight week terms throughout the year. Um, if people take one course each eight week term, typically that takes about 10 to 15 hours of work each week, two would take 20 to 30 hours of work each week, depending obviously on your background as well as which courses you have uh, paired up. And then for the MBA, we do have five start dates. So you can start pretty much any time during the year. Um, we're very busy here. We like to just, you know, continuously have um, cohorts starting, but it, it keeps things interesting. And um, there's always a time for you to be able to um, start earning your MBA. So um, as far as by the numbers, the average age in our student or in our um, program is 36 with 11 years of work experience. So we have a pretty mature population as far as professional work experience in the MBA. There is a requirement of a minimum of three years. So reach out to us if you have questions about that. We have some options with the MSM as well, a uh, master's in management program, um, if you don't have professional work experience. But yes, um, there is a minimum of, of three years for the IMBA. 50 states and territories are represented as well as 92 countries represented. So um, we have a global reach, uh, which is amazing. And again, that's gonna be the students that are in your classes with you. So you'll be in, in, in class with people from Australia and Egypt and California and, and people from all over the world. And then lastly, we have 70 Fortune 100 companies represented in the MBA program here. So um, so that's just our take on it. Uh, Professor Vlad, can you talk a little bit about like what the, what the typical background or maybe non-typical backgrounds um, that you see in your students um, in your classes? Um, it's, it's a good question. And I don't really know if there is such a thing as a typical background for our students. Um, I think, um, you know, I would, I would suspect that a lot of you heard about our program from poets and quants, right? You know, sort of where we get pretty, pretty, you know, good reputation, right? And this is exactly the mix of our students. They're a combination of poets, folks who are not quantitative, folks who are more on the humanities side, and we have a fair number of quants as well. And it's really through having this mix of students that the program works out so well. Whatever camp you're coming from, if you're good with numbers or if you're good with people or both, you will find a good place in this program. And by working with folks in groups and group work is typically a requirement in every single work, you will get quite a bit of exposure to others and to their connections. Um, I think technology is represented very well. We have quite a few students from California and quite a few students from the Silicon Valley area. But um, of course, you know, very strong representation from Illinois, but by, by, by all means, you know, Illinois students do not dominate the entirety of the program, right? We have a terrific mix. Exposure, I think, to a variety of cultures, variety of backgrounds, um, different types of, uh, you know, companies where folks are employed is pretty, pretty standard. Did I answer yeah. the question or is there yes, something? Yes, yes, that's uh -huh. exactly what um, I, I thought you would say, um, but yeah, I mean, every background, you could probably find every background in our program. So there is no, there is really no typical background. Of course, as you said, we have a lot of technical backgrounds, engineers, but then we have, we could have, um, you know, I've had an actor that we interviewed. I, I, I've i interviewed and, and they were admitted someone who trains the astronauts down in, in NASA in the largest pool in the world um, and, and trains those as a scuba diver. So there's, there's a lot of different backgrounds uh, in, in the MBA program. 
As far as the curriculum and content, um, you will complete 72 credit hours. So that is going to be 48 core, core, uh, core credits and 24 elective credits. So as you can see on this slide, we've got the core specializations on the left and the focus area specializations or your elective choices on the right. Of that box on the right, you will choose two of those paths as your elective path. Um, or you, uh, I'm sorry, as your focus area, or you can choose any three courses and create your own elective path. Um, so in total for the MBA, you will complete six specializations. Um, after that, you also have a responsibility to, or a requirement to complete two capstone projects, which um, basically is kind of a, a review of the three courses that you took in that specialization. You'll do two of those um, out of the six that you complete. And then lastly, before you graduate, there is a program capstone, which is a, a month long project that you will work with a professor on over um, around a month, uh, month long timeframe. Um, you'll work with a group and then present um, your findings to um, your peers. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the curriculum. Uh, Professor Vlad, where does your, um, where do your courses fit into this, this slide? So everything is in that course specialization that says managerial economics and business analysis. So all four courses in there. So I'm involved in all of them. So there is probably no escaping my courses for you folks, right? Excellent. Okay. Um, that's great. That's great to hear. And I, is that common um, from our faculty to actually teach all three courses in a special? It's actually pretty uncommon, right? Sort of, and um, it, you know, sort of from that perspective, not something that you see all of the time, which which is fair, right? But um, still, it turns out to be just three courses out of the entire program, which hopefully is not too much. And of course, the capstone is a choice that you have. But typically, I probably have about 400 students, 500 students every year who take my capstone, and it seems to be a really fun course for them. Okay, can you just briefly explain in your words what a capstone project would look like? Um, yeah, sure. Um, it's basically an opportunity to you know, sort of you typically don't present new content in the capstone, right? But the idea is to find um, applications for what you've learned already in other courses and um, to typically complete a short project, basically where within a couple of weeks, you'll do something that will demonstrate your mastery of all of the things that you've learned in other courses. So the capstone in my course is essentially students serve as a mini consulting team that creates a proposal for foreign direct investment. And that's how they get to apply skills in statistics and data analysis, skills in microeconomics and skills that are relevant to macroeconomics and monetary policy. So is it graded? Um, so it's usually pass fail, right? So if I think that's the case for all of the capstones, if you get 80% or higher, that basically means you pass. The main deliverable, actually just about the only one deliverable, is a big project that the group works on and presents. And, um, you know, that's uh, that's a setup. Okay. Um, I appreciate that explanation. I'm not sure I've ever had a real detailed explanation like that. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I did want to also touch on what makes up our courses. I think sometimes, you know, there's a little confusion on what is, you know, what makes up our, our, our online uh, courses. And there's really two main components. Um, one component is on Coursera, uh, which is a large educational platform. And then the other component is gonna be the high engagement component that we're gonna talk about here in the next slide. But as far as the Coursera component, um, these are massive online open courses or MOOCs, we like to call them. And I'm guessing that some of some of you uh, here today have taken a MOOC before, which is amazing. That means you're familiar with that platform. Um, but these MOOCs include so, uh, pre-recorded videos from our professors. There's self-assessed quizzes. Um, there's going to be some, you know, some reading assignments and peer evaluations. This is done asynchronously and um, if you've taken uh, a MOOC before, I think this is a common question. Do you earn credit in the course? You'll earn completion credit. So if you've earned your certificate on one of our MOOCs that is included in one of our courses, um, you'll earn that completion credit, but you still have to complete the high engagement component in um, our GEESE, uh, you know, four credit hour courses in order to earn that transcript credit. So very common question. We could talk a little bit about this at the end in the Q&A as well. So that other um, 
kind of the meat of the course, I like to say, is the high engagement component. This is going to be building upon the two MOOCs that are included in every eight week term course. Um, this is gonna give you the real world projects and, and kind of case studies that you work through with your professor and in your group projects and, and in your live sessions. What's included in that is a live lecture each week. Um, typically these run around 90 minutes and, and we'll confirm that here in a second. Um, typically there's small group breakout sessions where you're gonna be interacting and collaborating also within the live session uh, with your fellow students. The chats are always on fire in these, in these um, live classes. People are talking with the, the professor. So um, if you ever are curious about what that looks like, we have mock classes that we offer. I highly recommend attending one of those just to get a feel for what a live class is like. Um, and so in addition to that, you'll have group projects that you'll be working with four to five other students on. Um, and then you'll also have faculty office hours, which um, Vlad already talked about. And that seems to be a really great asset to the program and, and just a great chance to get to know people and ask questions and have an, um, uh, an environment that, that you can feel comfortable um, communicating that way and understanding all the material that your, your professor has uh, kind of covered in their in their live class. So so together, the MOOCs and the high engagement component, that's what makes up our four credit hour courses. Um, so Vlad, can you talk about what like how you structure your live classes and what what your live sessions look like? Um, sure. Um, yeah, so in our live session, with typical live sessions, I think in all of the courses that I'm involved in, uh, we try to concentrate on the application of concepts that you should have learned from the materials on Coursera, right? Sort of that's, um, that, you know, places, um, you know, sort of the responsibility on you to complete the, the videos first, right? Um, you know, in, in a couple of classes, we give out a case study before the live session and students have an opportunity to kind of work on it on their own or with their groups and then dig deeper during the live session. But the, the, you know, sort of the concentration there is on application. We're not going to necessarily cover a lot of new material that you haven't seen already, but we are going to do our best to dig deeper and to try to help you find applications for the content that you've learned in your own profession um, and professions where you might likely uh, be working in, in the future. What about uh, a group project? What is, can you give us yeah, an example? Um, like, yeah, so it, group, groups, uh, group projects or group work is a requirement pretty much in every single course that I'm involved with. So, you know, be prepared folks, right? Somebody, uh, sometimes, you know, you hear people saying, oh, I really would rather work on my own. That's probably not going to be, a, you know, an option for you here, right? We expect that you work with the members of your group. Um, they normally account anywhere between, you know, sort of 20 and 30% of your total grade. Um, groups are typically five to six students in size, depending on the course, usually around five or so. We will normally determine your group uh, makeup during, you know, at the very beginning of the second week of the course. And the group project starts around week three. So in a couple of courses, you know, it's just two group projects for the course. In some others, they're smaller, but more frequent. Um, and again, it's kind of that combination or a mix of students that come from both um, poet backgrounds and quant backgrounds that helps those groups work fairly well. Perfect. Um, thank you for explaining that. Um, on this slide, I did want to just kind of share, as, as we've said, we obviously the, the backbone of our program is our faculty. Um, that is the, the, you know, the highlight of our program. Uh, we have an amazing team that teaches and, and supports our programs. We have 74 plus faculty members who teach in online programs uh, with so many years of, of work experience, um, as well as tenured professors. We have 250 TAs that help within these classes, as well as 55 GEESE staff members um, that work in teaching and learning and, and and support these, these live sessions as well as courses. So a lot of heads come together and share um, in, in, or, in, or, in order to create uh, the content that we share and, and teach to thousands of learners. Um, we complete about 40 live sessions each week, uh, around 40. Um, we have in-person studios, we have professors that 
do live sessions from their home. How, how, where do you do your sessions, bud? It, um, it's actually a combination. I used to, um, you know, go to campus once a week to do the live sessions. Those days, I primarily do them from home, you know, sort of have switched to that from COVID. But um, I'm trying to spend more time on campus. The studios are unbelievable, right? Sort of you have a setup that is like a television studio. I always feel like, um, like a co-host of, uh, you know, News at 10. Um, and, uh, you know, but I think it works, it works really well either way, whether the faculty are doing this um, from their offices or from their homes, or if they're doing a sabbatical potentially from a different country, or whether they do them from the live lectures. I think, you know, sort of maybe the split is, you know, sort of it's kind of like two thirds in studio versus one third doing it from a different location. Okay. Um, yeah, that middle screen is, is somebody in the background. I'm sure in, inside a studio, it's nice. You have a whole team working with you when you're in studio. Um, so you have a lot of support. Um, through those live sessions, we actually have like 19,000 videos that we've created uh, to date. And we just broke ground on a brand new um, building that they're building on campus, a new business building that's going to have seven additional uh, studio. So we're so excited about the new business facility on the business campus. Um, this screen just kind of talks about, you know, the amount, as we said, 70 Fortune 100 companies are represented within the IMBA program. Um, I'm sure, Vlad, you've had so many different backgrounds. Obviously, you've said represent in the, in, in the, in your courses, are there any companies that stand out um, that you've had a lot of students from? Um, you know, um, I can't really say that something stands stands out terribly much. But Ooh. as I look at the list of uh, at the list of companies, I can recall a student pretty much from every single one of those companies at least, right? But um, you know, sort of Google, I think, has good representation. Microsoft has good representation. Smaller companies too. The companies from Illinois, like Caterpillar, have really good representation too. It's it's a really big mix, right? Sort of. I don't think that there is any single company that dominates the student body. That's what I thought. Um, I do want to encourage your questions. I see a lot of questions happening in the chat. It's, sometimes it's hard to go back and find the specific questions. So if you do have questions um, for myself or Vlad, please add those to the, the Q&A. Um, that way we can make sure that we get those answered. Um, okay, another common question, how do I connect in, in this virtual environment? Is there networking opportunities? The answer is yes. Um, we have so many opportunities. I threw a few up here on the screen. Um, we have iConnects, we have Immersions, iConverge. These are all GEESE-led opportunities. Um, iConnects, we bring you know, some of our faculty members in, we'll have somebody from our leadership team possibly where we'll kind of gather current students um, for so, a, a networking opportunity, have a little speaker uh, come in. We also have Immersions, which are basically projects that you can apply for um, virtually or in person um, domestically, they're, they're located domestically or internationally. And so we have these around four to, to five times per year. There's an additional cost, but just an amazing opportunity for 30 to 40 students to come together and work on a four to five day project uh, within various stakeholders in a, in a specific community. Um, so excellent opportunity there. And then I Converge. Uh, this is our yearly kickoff event every fall. Uh, we invite all of our online students as well as alumni to campus and um, really a great time. We'll have some speakers. There's um, a lot of opportunities to network. We have fabulous dinners. All, you know, many of the faculty members are there for you to just actually meet instead of being on Zoom. It's really fun. You, you get to see your friends and your, and your, your professors in person. Um, and then we have a football game and a tailgate and, and lots of fun. So then we have student-led opportunities. Um, you'll have Workplace, which is a, a Facebook group that's for all of our students. So many things happen on Workplace. Um, students help each other with study groups, study guides, job searching, um, just fun, like, look at me, I graduated. This has been an amazing experience type posts. Um, and so through Workplace, we also have student-led meetups where students suggest, um, I live here in Champaign. I'd love to meet up with any other students that live 
fairly close to me. Um, and they'll go ahead and meet up and create their own homegrown network um, outside of their, 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 their classes and their coursework. Of course, you're going to make some great relationships as well during all of your group projects and in your breakout sessions during your live classes. Um, and then lastly, we have uh, a couple of programs, the ambassador program, as well as a new student guide program that you can get involved with if you want to help us talk with prospective students or mentor some um, newly admitted students. So those are great opportunities as well. Did you go to iConverge? I have, I have, and it's been a fun experience. Usually have probably about 400, 500 students joining iConverge. Really good opportunity to see a lot of students that I've seen on the screen, right? I usually get, oh, I didn't realize that you'd be so tall, right? But um, it's, it's kind of like our homecoming of sorts, really meaningful experience, really fun experience, you know, very joyful, good program. And for students, if you haven't been to the University of Illinois campus before, that's your opportunity to come and see all of the things that we've been telling you about so that you can look at the alma mater statue, not just on the live cam, but um, can take a picture by it, right? So I really encourage you to come to the iConverge event, even if you're only thinking about the program. And of course, if you live close by, that might be something that uh, they'll help you, you know, appreciate what you're getting yourself into quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this past uh, I Converge, we held it actually at the State Farm Center. So it was where our basketball team plays. As you can see, that, that picture on the left was right down on the floor. It was really cool. Um, and then that picture on the right was, um, well, that actually I think is all the women that, a, a huge group of women that attended. We had a really large group from Singapore that, that, that came and came all the way from Singapore. So, um, so yeah, it's really awesome opportunity. This is just a slide just showing a few pictures um, from some meetups um, with our students. They went to a Cubs game. Um, that middle picture is a, a meetup actually in Columbia. So these happen all over the world as well. Um, we do have a, a full student and academic success team. I just wanna make sure everybody here knows that you're not in this alone. We have um, a full team that's gonna help you plan your degree plan, um, figure out which of those courses to pair up um, you can meet with them in office hours, one-on-one -on -one appointments. We have a whole email support uh, system that, that they'll be able to, to get right back to you. Um, so another great resource. Um, but in addition to that, I know we talked a little bit about faculty office hours. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that's like and, and how that goes? I know that sometimes students are kind of curious, like what is that, you know, who's going to be in those office hours and how often do they uh -huh. happen? Um, sure. Um, so usually, you know, sort of for the courses that I'm involved in, I typically hold um, three office hours per, um, you know, per, per week. And uh, my colleagues typically do another one or another two. So all in all, you know, plenty of opportunities to interact with us. Um, there's usually, you know, sort of the number of students differs, right? Sort of it kind of starts a little slower in the beginning. It, uh, sort of increases to maybe an average of, I would say, 40 students per office hour. And the way how I manage it, it's basically like a question and answer session, right? Sort of, you know, they'll say hello to each other. I ask students to raise their hand in Zoom if they have a question to ask, usually lots of questions about assignments and projects and things like that. And then I take questions one by one. And I typically notice there is a fair number of students who come to the office hours, even if they don't have a question to ask. Um, one of them told me, well, I um, come to the office hours to figure out what questions I should have had, right? Um, and so, you know, decent amount of interactions there. You know, my personal approach is that you don't leave um, anyone behind. So, um, you know, in in couple of uh, couple of weeks during the stats course, you know, when things get a little tougher, when they go through things like the central limit theorem and its applications to what you do, you know, we could have office hours that stretched into a couple of hours, but you know, we won't finish the office hours until we answer every single question that students want to ask. How many people usually join those? Um, kind of you know, anywhere, it depends, you know, sort of anywhere between 20 and 60, typically, you know, sort of the average is around 40. Okay. Um, At least okay. for me. Excellent resource. Um, and I'm sure yours are well attended. 
Um, let's jump back in to the application requirements. So if you like what you're hearing and um, you would like to apply, this screen has everything that you need to apply, all of the requirements, a resume, um, keep that brief, one to two pages, just work experience and education. Um, academic history, we do require a bachelor's degree uh, with a minimum GPA of 3.0. I'll talk about an, an option here just in one moment if you don't quite meet that 3.0 uh, GPA. We look at applications holistically, and so we're going to look at all of the parts. So don't get too worked up if, you know, you went to school 10, 20 years ago and you didn't quite have that, that 3.0. We have some options for you, and we're happy to, to walk you through those options. Um, we do require a personal statement. This is your chance to help us get to know you a little bit and, and really what your goals are and why this MBA, why are you applying and, and why do you feel like this degree is gonna help you reach those goals? We wanna hear it, we wanna get to know you and um, that's your, your chance to really wow us. We read a lot of application essays and so um, I would encourage you to um, be your authentic self but um, we don't necessarily wanna see a repeat of you know, your resume, I did this job, this job, this job, let's, let's make it unique and, and hopefully you'll stand out. Two pro professional letters of recommendation. So at least one of those, we like to have a, a, a current or previous supervisor, super easy. We just need the name and email. And as soon as you add those to your application, we will go ahead and email them a form that they fill out that has I don't know, I think it's eight to 10 questions that they rank you like strongly disagree to agree. And then there's just like two or three short ended paragraph sections. So it's not a huge lift for them. You can assure them that um, it won't take them a lot of time. If you're an international student, we do require a TOEFL test or an English proficiency test. Um, Lori, if you don't mind putting in the chat, just the exemptions and the requirements for that. It can be complicated, just reach out to us. We're happy to walk you through that, uh, that process. We do have also um, a, a situation where you can write a, a, an optional essay and include that if you're unable to obtain one of those tests. GRE, GMAT, we do not require those. Um, hardly anybody uploads those anymore. And we really just don't feel like that's a, a great indicator of what a successful student is gonna look, look like in our program. Um, and then lastly, we have two scholarships. Um, we have the Coursera scholarship, which will reimburse 70% uh, tuition. And then we have the Forte scholarship, uh, which is for women only that will reimburse $20,000 uh, $20, of the 24-ish K uh, tuition. Um, there is a, a, a prompt within the application and you do need to make sure you apply by the priority one or two deadline in order to be eligible for that scholarship. Um, and then lastly, I know I talked a little bit about um, another option, which is the performance-based admissions track if you don't quite meet that 3.0 GPA. This is for students exactly like that. Perhaps you also have maybe a, a large gap in your work experience, um, or you just wanna try out the program first before you're fully committed. And in this, you'll go through the same application process as you would for a degree student, but we will evaluate you for the performance-based admissions track. If admitted, you're admitted as a non-degree student. You'll take three courses um, and you'll have to earn a B or better and at least two of the three and an overall GPA of 3.0. And then we automatically admit you. So it's an amazing opportunity. Um, you know, a lot of schools don't even have that option. If you didn't meet that 3.0, you would be automatically um, not included. But we really want to take the mission of, um, you know, the University of Illinois to heart and make sure that we're really making education accessible to all. So this is just another great, um, great option uh, to apply. You can outright apply that route or we can actually recommend that to you as well. Um, give us one to two weeks to review your application and then we'll get back to you either with a missing materials email, we'll, um, a decision, or we'll invite you to interview. Everybody who's admitted will have an interview uh, with someone from my team. And um, don't be nervous though. It's a, it's a very easy, casual conversation. Uh, we just want to get to know you and your goals and, and again, why this program is, is right for you. Um, a couple deadlines are, that are coming up now. So if you really want to start this fall, um, you do need to submit by our final deadline of July 6th in order to start in August. 
But there is another term uh, in October. If you'd like to start then, that deadline would be September 7th. So lots of deadlines. Um, basically, we can always find a, a, a place for you um, in order to apply. Um, so reach out to us if you have any questions uh, regarding the application or um, any, any part of the, the process. One last thing I, I always like to mention, just a little bit of a note about the I and the IMBA. That really just refers to the method of delivery only. We are not going to have an I on your transcripts. There's not going to be an I or online on your um, diploma. Um, you are going to earn a master's of business administration from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. So um, I know that's a common question that we get um, uh, from, from prospective learners. So, um, so we're going to take some questions now. And, and while we're doing that, I'm going to take a look at the, at the Q&A code or the Q&A um, and see what questions we have there. Um, one question just Oh, I think you're answering that right now, Vlad. Are there opportunities for alumni to participate in live lectures? Um, yeah, I think from time to time, you know, we, we of course are often looking for guest speakers, right? Sort of, you know, you're certainly welcome to contribute to that. Um, a lot of us, um, you know, sort of la, la, run related programs, you know, sort of a lot of faculty will have their own podcasts and webinar series. So we will often invite students to those as well, or graduates. Um, and generally speaking, um, you know, network of your faculty and ask if you'd like to contribute. We, we love having alumni come back and do something like that for us. Excellent. Um, any questions, Lori, just I'm trying to catch up here um, that stood out that we could ask Professor Vlad? Um, are there any current students? I don't think so. Okay. Um, are there any current students and alumni specifically from the medical device industry sector? Is this sector well represented in the program? I know we have some. Do you have any in, input on that? I, I don't have very specific input, sorry. Okay. I recall a few students, but I don't recall what companies they've worked in. It's mm -hmm. really not a huge industry, right? But there is definitely some representation. You probably are going to find somebody in, in, in the course that you take that will have a somewhat similar background. Okay. Um, what time do you hold your live sessions? What are your options for your your courses that you teach? Well, it depends on the course. And typically we do either two live sessions or three live sessions. For example, for the statistics course, we normally would have sessions on Thursdays um, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and then from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. A typical session is an hour and a half long. And we will also have a session on Friday morning from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. And so doing that kind of helps us address a variety of time zones, um, different countries where the students are in, and students normally will find some session that they can attend. But again, you don't have to attend the live session. We really, really encourage you to. Lots of opportunities to interact live with the faculty, with your fellow learners. If you can't attend a live session one of those weeks, no problem. Watch the recording. Recordings are typically available within 24 hours. Good point. Um, I did see a question on um, GPA calculations if you are applying and your, your university is an international university. So we have the graduate college here. So any international applicant will upload your unofficial transcripts. We just need a scan or a copy for the initial application. And the grad college actually is um, really great and they have all of the evaluations and conversions and they will let us know if you're eligible or ineligible and we'll be able to work with you on that and, and communicate what those results are so you don't have to do anything we just really need um, your diploma your certificate of degree your mark sheets and then if they were not delivered in English we would need them also translated in English for your initial application. Once you're admitted and you start classes, we do, the grad college will require official transcripts and then they will go ahead and um, give you instructions on that when you're onboarding uh, before your first course. And so you'll have all the instructions on how to submit those to the grad college. So great question. Um, let's see, any other questions? I'm gonna just kind of take a look here. Um, while we're, while I'm doing that, um, 
Vlad, do you have any advice for people kind of looking at the program um, and um, kind of on the fence, you know, deciding whether or not they, they're gonna, sure. gonna apply? Um, uh, you know, lots of bias, of course, on my side, because I genuinely believe in the program that we run, right? Um, I enjoy teaching quite a bit. We have an amazing student body. You know, when I talk about the program, I often use the comparison of basically getting uh, it's like, you know, enrolling in our program, it's like buying a suit from um, a London high street shop, something that costs thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds, but getting that for essentially target prices, right? The program is extremely well-priced, probably the best value in the industry, if I had to give my personal opinion, right? Um, you know, to get tuition of around 24,000 for a full-scale MBA program, from one of the, you know, of the top public universities in the United States and in the world. I think that's really an amazing, amazing deal. And I think that value kind of helps us with enrollments quite a bit because we don't do a lot of advertising. A lot of our students come to us through their, through their network. It's a referral by the word of mouth. And that's probably one of the strongest um, signs that this is really a high quality program that people appreciate. Great advice. Um, one more question on kind of the grading in, in your courses. How does faculty evaluate um, the students? You know, is there mm -hmm. a final exam in all of your, in your courses? Um, well, you know, I think in all of the courses that I'm involved in, we either have two exams and we determine the final or just a final exam for the capstone course, the deliverable obviously is the capstone project that you're developing. But yeah, you know, sort of you do rely on examinations in our assessments. These are typically non-proctored examinations. For example, you might, you know, sort of get a time window of say three or four hours to, um, you know, sort of complete your exam. You're also telling us that you're following the academic integrity standards and we do take academic integrity fairly seriously. Um, and, you know, so do our, so does the great majority of our students, right? It's the reputation of the program. Um, we are running a high quality program that is appropriately rigorous um, and that still balances that trigger with the ability to open its doors to a lot of students from, um, you know, from very different backgrounds. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, you know, exam is, you know, unlike actually many European universities, because if you're from Europe, you might be used to a setting where the exam is the only thing that determines your final grade. Um, exams are typically just one of the determinants, right? Sort of, they might be fairly important. They might account for 30% of the grade or 35% of the grade. I think, you know, sort of anywhere between, you know, 25 and 50, you know, sort of is what I've seen in the courses I'm associated with. But there is going to be a lot of other things that will contribute to your grade. And from time to time, we also provide students with extra credit opportunities, for example, if they participate in our research projects. Okay. Um, yes, there was a question about our exams proctored at local proctoring center. No, you do these on your own. They're um, bas essentially open book, right? And you practice. Yeah, yeah. Typically, the exams are open book exams in a sense that you can use any material from the course to answer the questions. At least this is the setting that we typically do in the courses that you know I teach or that I co-teach, right? and you cannot use anything else. So don't go out on Google looking up for those questions, right? Um, but, you know, sort of there is a degree of trust involved in this. Um, and um, students, you know, generally rise to this occasion beautifully. Okay. Um, I see one question that I'll just answer here. Um, for professionals with significant experiences or flexibility to take more than two courses per term to finish sooner. So that's not something we recommend. I mean, the majority of our students, if not, you know, I mean, most of them are full-time working professionals. And if you took two courses, that's adding another 20 to 30 hours on top of your, your 40 plus hour job. Um, so, but occasionally we have a student that might be in between jobs or perhaps taking a break and you know, those students could potentially take an extra course, but that's not something that we probably um, would recommend, but you would be able to work with your advising team and, and see what they think about that and, and balancing all of that. So um, it looks like Lori did an amazing job within the Q 
Q&A in the chat. Thank you, Lori, for handling all of that. I'm going to throw this QR code back up on the screen for anybody who wants to take a quick scan of that. But um, but I think we're going to wrap up. I think we got most of the questions answered. Um, Professor Vlad, this was amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. It's really nice to just put a face with some of our faculty members. And I hope everybody can see how approachable and how um, interesting and, and knowledgeable our faculty members are. Um, we really, like, as I said, they are the heart of our program and um, we're really proud of that. So thank you so much for being here. Lori, thanks for doing the chat. And um, I hope everybody has a great evening. If you have any questions, reach out to us. I'll go ahead and put my um, email in the chat as well. But um, other than that, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day, you know, morning, evening, wherever you're at, and we'll um, hopefully see your application soon. Have a good, a good one. Thanks, folks, and good luck.